welcome, welcome. To episode 41. 41. We did a retake by the way <laughs> because she said 40. That's not why we did the retake. But like, let's just say that that's why we did it. Can you get one? Get one your footstool, please. You want a footstool now? No, I'm kidding. Okay. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> This is talent, I tell you, no? You yeah. asked Ashu what she's been doing for the last 30 minutes since set up. Ask Ashu what he did 30 minutes before that. See, I, I wish we didn't we had higher fidelity cameras so you could see her, <laughs> her arms or all have these impressions. Because I Tashu, woke up early. Queen Ashu has been sleeping. So that's I'll tell you what happened. She woke up with all this drool. No, I didn't. Like, oh my god, I have to do makeup. <laughs> For the podcast. Of course, I'm gonna do makeup for the podcast, but I didn't have drool. And then I came here, I just hadn't showered, and then we had lunch, and then he went to go shower, and I was like, take five minutes, because I knew I was gonna sleep otherwise. He took half an hour, so he slept. Mm, yeah, it seems like it's my fault. It really is. It's just such a mistake. Anyway, I poured myself a gin. Cheers. You have to go like this. Cheers. You're not understanding. No. You have to hit it like this with your thumbs up. I did that only. And then you have to drink from the thumb. Oh. So I have to do this and then it's like I'm Cheers. tasting thunder. If you guys mm. get the reference. Thumbs up. You shouldn't you shouldn't make bad jokes. Why is it I called thumbs disgusting. up and not thumbs up? I don't know. With Maybe they thought they they thought they'd be hutke. But but mispronouncing and teaching one point three billion people <laughs> the wrong spelling of thumb. Pretty much. I mean, it is weird that it's thumb. I forget that, like, there is good tasting gin in this world. I think all gin tastes good. No, this one's really nice. It has a little bit of, like, a grapefruitiness to it. It has a um, coriander huh. seed flavor to it. Yeah. This is a new gin, not a new gin, but it's a gin that we rarely drink. It's called... Because it's powder. fucking expensive. Yeah. Pretty expensive. 8,000 rupees on No, it's not. 8,000 and duty free. It's 4,000 bucks. Where? At the takeout over here. Really? So it's cheaper on duty free for me. Maybe it's the bigger bottle. No. No. It's 4,000 bucks. It is still very expensive. So we only drink it once in a while. And <laughs> today <is the laughs> today we're like sharing one glass. <laughs> yeah, why are we sharing one glass? Because there's only one glass outside. <laughs> That's the logic. Yeah. Genius. I thought we'll share. Jhoota khane se pyaar bhatta hai. Achha. Kud ko se khaar. Anyway. What are we talking about today? <laughs> okay. I'm going to be with Michael Flusser. Right? I think it's really far away. Oh. <laughs> From me. <laughs> right. Okay. I wanted to talk about multiple things. So I think let's start with the fun one. Okay. Why Shahrukh Khan is the greatest actor of all time. Oh. Okay. And I'm going to start with my favorite ad. <laughs> New favorite ad. Yeah. This can't be a favorite ad. Okay, it's my current favorite ad. Yeah, Lyra Spandex. It's not Lyra. <laughs> okay. A little sidebar. Ajit is obsessed with Lyra, the company that makes like leggings and tights and whatever the fuck they make. Pants of multicolors. I'm not wearing it before we start playing with my pants. Um, Dashu only wears Bliss Club. It's an ad where like the jingle goes. So he does this. Lyra, Lyra, every time and everywhere. Lyra, Lyra. That's it. You know the next line. No, I don't know. Anyway, he's obsessed with it and every chance he gets, he talks about it. But why am I obsessed with it? Apparently because it comes in every theater. Yeah. In, that on, doesn't mean you get upset. It's not even a good ad. <clears throat> okay, so PVR, um, okay, first of all, like advertising in movie theaters is by far one of the best ways to advertise because captive audience can't go anywhere other than going to the bathroom. And uh, so it has the, the worst ads that they can <laughs> possibly have because they're like, uh, hook to dalna hi nahi hai. Ye to, matlab, hook ke liye, the attentive audience to hai already. So, we will see ads in the future. So, the worst produced ads. The worst one is actually the one with. Uh, I don't know. I actually don't. Maybe it's Manya World. It's the Alia Bhatt, Anil Kapoor, and then like fucking five minutes long. Malabar, Malabar Jewelry. Malabar Jewelry. It's That's like, a new fuck. new entrance. Five minutes fucking yeah. long and it just doesn't stop. And then they play it and then they play it in like another. Line. Like, I feel like there's one like Punjabi version of it as well. I want to kill somebody every time I play it. Yeah, and then the thing is that like, 
PVR has um, <clears throat> like surround sound. They have like you know sound that comes out of the roof as well, like crazy surround sound. But they don't say, share the same specs with the ad company. So the ad company gives them the shittiest video with the shittiest mono stereo sound, like not not stereo sound, but like mono sound. And then they blast it with just like their front speaker. So it's like... And it's like fatoing. Yeah, it's fatoing. Um, I don't know why they do that. But like yeah. because of that, I have seen Lyra <laughs> ads too many times. And he's obsessed with them. And they've changed ambassadors. And he knows the song by word. Just this much. The what, one more sang. than I ever knew. And it started with Pariniti uh, Chopra. Chopra. Huh. And then after that, it was uh, Taksi Pannu. And now, new entrant. Only seen her once. What's her name? Janvi Kapoor. Janvi Kapoor. And the reason I know is because he told me last night. Anyway, coming back to my favorite, current favorite ad. Is this ad for Everest Masalas. And it's basically like Shah Rukh Khan is in his vanity van and then he steps out and this like swarm of uh, paparazzi comes to take photos of him. And then he, he in his head, he's like, oh, I want to go and eat some like Everest, I don't know, like chole biryani, biryani. biryani. So he's like, Are, us, us van me jao, us van me jao. Bachan hai wahan pe. so the pap, pap runs to the other vanity van and then Amitabh Bachchan steps out and he's like, aray, aray, go to Shah Rukh Khan, sabse bade star, King Khan of Bollywood or something, it's something he says. And then again, they run back to Shah Rukh Khan and then like this exchange happens two times and then finally, Shah Rukh Khan and Amitabh Bachchan are like, aray, Alia Bhatt, Alia Bhatt, and then Paparazzi goes running to the other direction. And it's, <coughs> it's so funny because one, like, Amitabh Bachchan and Shah Rukh Khan have constantly been pitted against each other because of KBC and Dawn. And then, and they are the biggest, biggest stars of Bollywood. And then it's, it's like nice that they're like welcoming, they're taking that as a joke. They're also welcoming a third person into the status that they've held all this time. I didn't think of it that way. What did you think? Just Madhudar. No, Plus, I, it's a woman. Yeah. So, like, it's a really nice thing. I don't know. I wouldn't say Alia Bhatt is the same stature as them. But, like, I think it's a really good ad. And it's also just really funny. Because you're literally getting them to talk less about themselves. And talk more about the other actor. Because they want to go eat, like, biryani. Which is so funny. But it's such a well done ad. And I think it's genius. Tash was really happy. <laughs> so good job, script writers, for that ad. Good job, um, Everest Masala. Your late nights getting this approved are <laughs> Honestly, the ad industry sucks. It's hard to work in, in at an ad agency because exactly like I just said, sleepless nights and like I mean we've dealt with clients on a very tiny level when it, as compared to people at ad agencies who have to like constantly pitch ideas and whatever and get approval and work really hard and like script and if you're if you're also doing the production of the ad you're working with actors who have terrible terrible attitudes and like it's really difficult I always looked down upon the ad industry because um I've worked in production (laughs) and I've seen some god-awful like ad ad scripts and and I'm like what were you thinking what drug were you on uh, who approved this? How did you get a cl- client to say yes to this? And clients like Pepsi and stuff, Pepsi Domino's. And like, I've always just been like, you guys are so stupid because I could have come up with a better ad. So that's just my personal like take. But I also just feel, <laughs> I always have a personal take. But I also just feel like they, it's a really hard life actually working in yeah. the ad industry. I mean, also like, you don't know where the idea started and what it became. Yeah. Because of the variety of stakeholders that are required for something like this. Like, imagine like having an idea and then having to like run it past your legal team, their legal team, then the actor's legal team. Yeah, I agree. Then getting the culture appropriation. I agree. I mean, but most ads nowadays suck. Anyway, I just pulled out a hair. Oh shit. And look how how long it is, viewers. She constantly does this, even in the car. (laughs) Every two minutes, she'll roll down her window and I'm thinking, God, someone's going to get screamed. And it's not that. She's just cleaning her hair. Hey! Stop playing with your hair. 
Okay, um, sisters, misters. Uh, so Anyone else who's listening to this uh, to this podcast, can you please give some tips for stopping hair growth? Thank you. Stopping hair growth or stopping hair? So stopping hair, hair falls. No, please ah! stop hair growth. That's what she <laughs> wants. She wants to go bald, no? I'm already taking hair growth uh, serum. Acha, okay. So Shahrukh Khan, this ad no, is like, the reason why. No, this ad is like. It's just a feel good ad. Okay. Why is he the greatest actor? Is because I think, I mean, I don't have a lot to say. I feel like I've, I grew up always liking Shah Rukh Khan and, and like a lot of his films from like the early, nineties are films that I can still watch today and enjoy. Early nineties, even the two thousands, um, he definitely had a dip. I think he's back up. <laughs> we already spoke about Pathan and how much we loved him. Hmm. We spoke on how much Natasha loved Pathan. <laughs> well, we were Jawan and we loved that. Jawan was fun. I know that you have a lot to say about Shah Rukh doing Jawan. So do you want to start with that and then we go back to his part? Do I have a lot to talk? We discussed about? it like day before yesterday. About what? Because he's doing like he's he's going into South ah, Indian right, cinema. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I Wait, think... Wait one second, can I just say one thing? Just sure. a disclaimer. We're from North India and we're a little ignorant about the South, Southern India industry. Yeah. So please don't be offended. Yeah. Uh, more so with Natasha than me. Please don't be offended. Um, I think Natasha has a higher chance of getting cancelled than I do. <laughs> I'm not going to offend very, anyone like I'm that. Very, My I point is, like, I don't know the difference of the different, like... Languages. The, no, I know the languages, but, like, different states, I think, also have different industries and I, I'm not uh, sure uh, so uh, I'm uh, just uh. saying like apologies if we get that right, wrong right. I, okay so Shah Rukh's really interesting to me because Shah Rukh actually has stopped looking at sh- like himself as just an actor but he's moved to becoming <clears throat> a much larger like business person within the industry and that's a very like interesting space to be in because he's actually the only actor who's achieved that in Bollywood um, sure I guess. There are other definitely... Do you mean like, are you, are you saying that because of like Red Chilies? Yeah. Um, there are definitely others. Do you know others. that Juhi Chabla is the co-founder yeah. of Red Chilies? She got, she, she removed herself though from it. Oh. Uh, yeah. When? She exited like after they bought KKR and all. But their oh. first movie production, you know who that got? What, I know. Trippie Trippie Bill. Bill and it's funny. Um, F- dropping fun facts. So that was their first production. But like, if you look at most actors, their productions are largely focused around them and the work that they do uh, but it rarely goes outside of that and like Red Chili's as a company has really transformed itself to become one of the largest like VFX companies um, and that's largely what you see with his recent movies so you look at Zero, you look at Fan, you look at um, the more recent ones, Those are the Jawan, two terrible Pathan. films that Shah Rukh did. Yeah, Jawan also, right? Sorry, Pathan also and Jawan for that Pathan matter. was amazing! You're not, let me finish my point. <laughs> It's not that the work okay, fuck the story, fine, Natasha liked it and a lot of people will. But more than that, these are all like case studies to the work that can be done in India with regards to VFX. And like, you know, he does these things as like portfolios for like global audiences so that uh, or global directors and uh, producers so that they know that they can come to India to make a lot of this stuff. So, you know, India's VFX market has actually grown and a lot of it has to do with um, red chilies coming in and really investing that time and space and of course because of that almost every other global player has come in like industry light and magic which is like the ones who make everything for star wars they actually do a lot of their production in india now and uh, disney does a lot of production and then yeah uh, back yeah. when natasha was looking for production jobs we were finding all these animation companies that were here yeah and when, when we're saying production i mean yes there are a bunch of films that get shot here and technically produced here in India but when Achit is talking about it he basically means post-production yeah yeah VFX yeah um and uh, even like Game of Thrones like some of the dragons were made here even uh, all Narnia. of the Marvel films yeah all the Marvel films um, yeah. Narnia was one of the first projects but the entire line was actually made in India so it's really really cool that that's happening and like Shah Rukh's actually in the forefront of that and I find that really fascinating that regardless of the 
amount of screen time that he gets he's actually doing more for the industry than a lot of other actors do with their own personal wealth um and of course yes jawan became the first movie that really united a national front in terms of production scale and size which means a lot of the actors or the cast even the back end of the entire business had a lot of like uh, national movement lots of people from different industries within the film industry as a whole um came together that was really really exciting to see um the story is something that is like a personal taste and you have to have the mentality to go for it with a thought process but um, this is where the north indian uh, yeah. ignorance yeah. yeah 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 for sure like I, you know like every i feel like every uh, culture has its own like style. standard and style and yeah. and th- that's what they're looking for yeah. um and the goal is that everyone elevates yeah. but there is no definition of elevation as well right yeah. like we when you and i think of in like when we talk to our friends we're always like oh man these movies are made for us they made for our mass audience mm. and like we look at it as if like it's a bad thing but like you know eventually like if these movies are made for the mass like as the generations go up we will start seeing them get more refined we'll get there we'll get to a point where we're like we are getting there yeah. it's always like i mean it's like a 90 10 split where 90% is made for the masses and 10% has a little bit more meaning and messaging yeah uh but the I 90% think as, is what the money where the money is yeah. yeah and i think when we were younger there was actually no divi- division at all and like everything was just made for the masses yeah. like i don't remember watching a i mean like maybe one or two but like i don't remember watching films and being like wow that was profound or i was also younger so who who knows like i didn't see it at that I didn't yeah. see it like that at that time but even if I go back and watch films now from like from the past I don't think that they're like insanely profound and are trying to like convey a message and like this is going to change the way people look at the society as a whole and stuff like that like that was not happening as such and it has started happening in the last like 15 years maybe when i was young i was so small like i was only 4 like 15 years ago you know <laughs> No, you weren't. I'm not dating a 19 year old. Getting married to one in two months. So, guys, that's the other thing. Like, getting you, married in two months. That your math was so wrong. I don't even know what to say. You said four. I was four, 15 years ago. That means you're 19. Oh, sorry. Tashu's still oh, not woken. Oh, sorry. <laughs> She's still not woken up, guys. Okay, you're so you're getting a sleepy one. You can like skip sleep. this episode and just go to party too. Actually, I'm not sleepy. So, anyway. Um, I want to ask you. Do you feel like Shah- you or you? No, you, you. <laughs> okay, sorry, I pointed the camera. I was, and said, like, are we talking the audience? I was thinking. Do you as do you feel that Shah Rukh Khan doing a film like Jawan, which is very like again, I feel like I feel like an ignorant North Indian, but like it, which is very like South Indian cinema style, um, in terms of like. I don't know this the ridiculous that happens and I enjoyed it like so much but like the ridiculous shit that was happening the double role which is so far fetched not like Shahrukh hasn't done double roles and he's done some amazing double roles by the way but whatever Dawn Dawn fucking duplicate what a film anyway uh, <laughs> but like do you think that this move is like is is the start of the end for Bollywood That's interesting Um I do think that there it is a glimmer of hope in in the in the line of like why do we need so many different schools of art as compared to having one unified school of art um which if you look at it like America has done that really well right everything is hollywood mm-hmm. um there is no differentiation there's differentiations based on budgets yeah. um and differentiations based on genre but not differentiations based on language yeah. um, and storyline um i think that that But something... i feel like they can't really do language cuz no why not there's going to be in the future you will only record once but you will have ai generated language dis- uh, depictions all the way no my point is like the language barrier is not so large in america Yeah, yeah. The language bar- barrier is huge here. Yeah. Right like uh, yes, I'm sure 
almost everybody or like a huge percentage of our what's it called country. of our country and people citizens of our country can speak hindi and will at least understand hindi if not not like speak it but there is still a big divide because of comfort levels of it yeah so i so, i agree with that yeah and but I, i feel like that doesn't exist in america yeah it doesn't and so that's, that's why what, i'm saying language is not a barrier for them which is why they've managed to create one yeah. larger like industry called hollywood yeah but like what i was trying to get at was the fact that like as you get into the as ai is starting to come in yeah. you will not have the need to produce like when you right now when you do a multi language movie so even pathan for that matter was shot twice it was shot once for hindi the other was for uh, uh, kannada or maybe telugu i didn't know about pathan actually yeah a lot of these movies that you are, mean pathan or jawan sorry yeah i mean so like why would they do that same with pathan um, but <laughs> it's not the same thing so for those two they they did shoot it twice and actually a lot of movies i mean that's made, what they did with bahubali ha huh, in the south they said it with they they do that a lot because they have to cater to a larger audience yeah. and they believe that that can be yeah. that that way as ai is coming up we won't have the need to do it twice because ai will replicate one language with the other I guess. and it yeah. will do vfx in that way as well i mean the whole jawan the whole movie half of it sharukh is young the dh the shit out of him and we both were like what the fuck is happening to him <laughs> only when the story went on when they showed the old like whatever the daddy yeah that's when we realized what was happening and yeah. by the way we haven't like talked about this but like spoiler alerts if you haven't seen the movie don't watch this episode um fuck that you have seen the movie fucking go for it um anyway so <laughs> so wait i i really sort of about sharuk but i have another question about this like merging yeah. of it, uh, bollywood and like i want to say tollywood but i don't know remember robot yeah. robo what of the fuck they were calling it the one with uh, ashwarya rai and rajnikanth do yeah. you want to know man yeah 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 That was a that was a horrible film it flopped like mad but I watched it obviously I've not even read it in my life yeah and that was also very typical non bollywood because of the shit that was going yeah. on in it yeah. so like what do you think has changed for the audience that now we're more accepting of like certain styles as opposed to I don't know maybe like 10 years ago when that film oh. came out that's even, that's easier to understand because what has happened is that throughout covid and even before that uh the big change that happened was that we uh, weren't forced to watch content based on what was being distributed to our own cities and theaters mm-hmm. we are rarely ever had a uh, south indian movie distribution in the north of india uh, they would do it very specifically and sporadically but um th- there was a recent study that was done and now or i mean pvr released is this detail but like 50% of their movies are regional movies at this point so the distribution of regional content has increased not because there wasn't demand at the before but because people didn't realize that there were other schools of cinema doing good content and covid helped with that because in covid everything went on ott and unlike some of us who had things to do uh, a lot of people didn't um in in a bad and a good way as well but like you know for them they started realizing that there's content everywhere and mm-hmm. like people who were punjabi did not watch punjabi content but all, all of a sudden realized that hey there's good punjabi content out there that's why there's a movie called carry on jatta that has three parts to it uh so you know and they do full <laughs> billboards they do full billboards in delhi about it as well so you know uh, that has really changed in in mm-hmm. the sense and then the other thing is like production costs have gone down like right? um cost of producing content significantly has reduced like the amount of computing computing power you need the kind of cameras you need the kind of technology you need mm-hmm. all those things are also scaling downwards as well um so i mean we're shooting 4k 60 frames per second with an ugly door on a little tiny on a on a tiny camera with one mic and one laptop right like 10 years ago this would be a studio setup with two mics uh, one person handling it two light yeah. people all those things right like so all of that like this is a really bad example but also <laughs> like like if you just 
increase budgets as you go along the, the compounding effect and value that a budget gives you today is a lot more than it probably did 10 years ago so i think that is going to be really fascinating and you guys just love it when he gives lectures you're so wise i guess that's the only reason why you're marrying me <laughs> because you give lectures because you can stand the lectures i don't know it depends i feel like that's the depends on my part. mood i guess i was asking the questions a lot of times i have a lot of questions for you yeah ask me more any no now i want to discuss shark okay discuss best shark. actor of all time yeah can you i'll tell you what i my first memory of a shark film is with what film do you know mine you want me to tell them tell you tell don't tell me you. that's your first memory that's my first memory for this for this But this was the first movie I watched in the movie theater. And he still fucking loves it to date, which I is was, so questionable. I was three years old, and I remember not having popcorn, but getting cheese balls to the movie theater and having cheese balls. How do you get cheese balls to the movie theater? They used to give you cheese balls there at the movie theater. <laughs> so unfair. And oh. that used to uncomfortable. My fucking feet. <laughs> Me too. Let me get comfy. Sorry for the noise. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, that was my first movie in a movie theater. I remember screaming when they were beating up Charu, and I said, "Charu, bhaiya ko mat maro," and the whole theater apparently laughed at me. In cuteness. You were three. Yeah. I can't. I can't believe that you said it loud enough that people heard you to laugh at you in cuteness. I mean, my fa- parents told me. I didn't. Hmm. झूठ बोला दो बस. anyway <laughs> Then my first memory is not that. My first memory of Shah Rukh is uh, uh, Dil Se Dil To Pagal. That song from Dil To Pagal. Hmm. Hathi Jaisi Poonch of Saban Raja. Again, because of Shah Rukh. I haven't watched. I don't remember the movie honestly, and I watched it in rush twice now. So you cannot make me watch it again. Uh, Dil To Pagal. Yeah. I recently watched it once by myself. I don't know. I why. watched it twice. Once with you. No, you haven't. Yeah, yeah, we watched it. No, we have. Yeah. I hadn't watched it ever. Yeah. editing this is so hard don't edit it let people see <laughs> and leveling the noise so poor people's ears don't poor blow people, up hungry people that's my favorite movie it's <laughs> a favorite scene from munna bhai um so i used to watch kuch kuch hota hai as a child a lot and i don't know why i liked it um it's hard to explain why i liked it actually and there's like such cringe scenes like now when i watch it, i'm like theek ya tatti chal rahi hai yahan pe dil to pagal hai कुछ कुछ होता है हां हां कुछ है दिल तो पागल है इज रियली वियर्ड यू नो द वियर्डेस्ट मूवी दैट आई यूज्ड टू हैव द मोस्ट फन विद व्हाट हसीना मान जाएगी ओके वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट गोविंद एंड सच अ रेपी मूवी एंड माइक इज नाउ माइन व्हाट पुट द माइक बैक ओके फाइन सो आई विल टेल यू माय फेवरेट शारक फिल्म एज अ किड एट लीस्ट बादशाह बादशाह गुड फिल्म बादशाह इज सच एन आइकॉनिक फिल्म या I think we need to discuss it for the rest of the episode. Why? Okay, let me give you a gist for the people who haven't watched it. And if you haven't, like seriously, guys, please watch it. You could have asked me for the glass, actually. You're uh, get distracted too quickly. I am already distracted. Why don't you? Done why don't you talk about Bacha? <laughs> why don't I put my hands behind my head? Idiot. Okay, so <clears throat> Bacha is about Shah Rukh Khan, who is Bacha. He's a detective. And what's funny is that I remember as a kid, I used to watch. Or and like maybe read a lot of uh, Inspector Gadget, which was also a similar like detective inspector mm. situation, and he had all these cool gadgets. Yeah. And so did like at the same time we were also watching like Agent Cody Banks and stuff. So all these like cool gadgets used to exist in like and multiple James Bond. and James Bond of course James Bond, but was like not made for a younger yeah, yeah, yeah. audience, yeah. but sure. So Bacha is this detective who um has like a team of people and his team consists of like Johnny Deaver so you can just imagine how capable they are of things and um and they solve these like tiny petty ish cases for people and this one like client and like ek to they have the coolest office there are some really funny scenes yeah. like they convert 
I don't know, they convert like, I think their office into, bed. you know, into a hospital and bed, yes, because they keep like, they like turn the, flip the wall and the other side, there's a hospital bed or like there's a painting and stuff. It's so funny. And then, um, so whatever, like all this funny shit happens and this finally this client comes to them and like, then he pretends to be blind so that he can get this girl to fall in love with him and then they perform. <laughs> so funny they perform an eye surgery on him and I think John Lee is the doctor and he's like I'll put a goat's eye into his eyes he'll be a glass eye or some shit else anyway I'm like, it's doing such a bad job explaining and it and the music the music was iconic music is amazing sing the rip for Bacha no Bacha oh I'm Bacha I'm not singing Bacha oh Bacha Bacha oh Bacha Bacha he's so off it's hurting my ears she makes fun of me when I'm telling her to fucking sing. She doesn't want to sing. But <laughs> love, kya, kya, kya kya Content creator, ho, aap, content creator. <laughs> content creator, ho, judge ko karo content. <laughs> Why not? So, um, the funny thing is that I did Rashad come out after or before Rashad too? None of the Rashads came before. Bacha is like 90s. So basically, I'm sure you guys remember this scene because who hasn't seen Rush Hour? There's a scene where Jackie Chan's like hanging from this really high ceiling and then Chris Tucker comes to like save him and he grabs hold of this like oh, drape right, right, right. so that Jackie Chan can like slide down. That scene is in Bacha. Wait, show me the phone. Let me see when Bacha comes. That scene is in Bacha. Then like there's the scene of him walking on the stairs. I think, uh, sorry, on, on the outside of a building. I think that's like a Mission Impossible, Mission Impossible. scene. There's so many copies, but it's so much better. And it's so fucking funny. So you must watch it. Bachelor released in 1999. I was three years old. It was iconic. Now we're who, does, who does who says iconic? Me, yeah. No, you can sit with us. No. When did it release? 1998. Damn it! So but they, they couldn't have copied They could have copied They it. could not have copied 100% copy. Dash, like... It's the, Dash are two, na, weekend. That's no, one, one. The bank heist happens in one. Bank, uh, the two... Two is somewhere else. It's not even in, like, LA. Are you crazy? Okay, fine, maybe. We'll double check and we'll put a note about it. But anyway, I highly recommend everybody watches Bacha. Then another great one was Duplicate. There was a really good one called Yes Boss. Fear Me Dilla and Lasani is a really good film that I made Ajit watch recently. Though you said you had watched it, but I don't believe yeah, you. Yeah, I actually believe you because Ajit hasn't seen half the time. I remember right? watching it because Paresh Rahul was a scary man in that, in that movie. Sort of, yes. Yeah. So anyway, so that was in the 90s. Then let's think of the, the of the 2000s. How can you not remember the first good movie of the 2000s by Shah Rukh Khan? Tell. So this. I can't relate. So this. Ajit is obsessed with so this. Why don't you talk about why you're obsessed with it? Because it's so weird. So this is a story. This is a very simple story, first of all, and it's a, it's a, just a nice story. But the second thing is that it has this whole like repatriation thing, and I think I watched it too much when I was coming back to India from America and it Which became year did it release in? 2006 or something 2006 kaha? Haan, so A.R. Lehman ke gaane hai usne jo itne achche hai and wo, wo hi yaad rehte hai and mein wohi sunta tha so... Ye jo des hai tera Ye tara wo tara har tara Yuh hi chal raha chal raha hi All of these songs are from that movie and they're really nice songs You get to listen to them on road okay, there, there. And... Don't feel so bad I'm not feeling bad. Okay, sure. So, Sudesh, I was thinking more of the likes of like Kalpuna, Ho and Mehuna. And Chakte India. Chakte India. All great films. But I actually, I think 2000s was the time when like Shah Rukh decided that he's kind of done being a romantic actor. Yeah. And he started actually, doing a lot the, of action. The, you know, and... the interesting thing is he actually started as a, in, in negative roles. Yeah, as a villain. As a villain. And um, I've seen that as well. It's actually scary. Um, and then he duplicate like, is also a duplicate role. is a negative and a positive positive role. Um, his like transition happened because of DDLJ, and uh, and then he kind of like it became his personality. And then I think like, but then if you think of it, his love roles are largely sequestered by 
Karan Johar and Yash Raj. Like they are the only Karan ones. Karan Johar not so much actually. Yeah, Yash Raj. Yash Raj, right? Like yeah. same thing, na? Like. Even yeah, if you see that like documentary about the Yash Raj film, whatever it was called, yeah, on Netflix, like that kind of explains Shah Rukh's journey in yeah. Bollywood as well. And like Yash Raj and Karan Johar are like in hand in hand, like yeah. Dil to Pagal. One of those one of those movies he was in AD for, and then the next yeah. movie he did. Yeah, so he they was were, like, he. It was DDLJ and which, yeah, Karan Johar was in DDLJ as an AD, and then he also had that little like role. And then he ended up doing, uh, which was the next film that yeah. he did, right? Which so, kuch hota hai. so, kuch kuch hota. so like you know that that was like his like chocolate boy phase, like yeah, his he was in his prime twenties, and that's when he was doing all these love movies, yeah. and then he started doing some amount of like you know, Action. unlike social commentary. As well, like yeah, so, this was social comedy. I think he started with action, and that kind of became yeah, yeah. for a really long time. No, and a, then he went on to social comedy because yeah. then he did like My Name Is Khan and like my kid, my name is Khan. Chakde. Is one, then Chakde is one. Then he also did uh, Dawn, which was an action film. Yeah, Dawn was two thousand eight or nine or something, and then Dawn two came out a little later, twenty twelve or thirteen or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, what else has he done in the middle? Then I think then. He said. Then, then he, he moved into like complete action with Ravan and uh, Om yeah, Shanti that was Om for actually a while. came out in the middle. I feel like I, then he weirdly transitioned into like some really massy, like typical massy stuff, which was like a strange phase in his life. I feel, but like Fan was a weird film. Yeah, that I don't know. I actually haven't watched it. So those were all his like. Stuff. I want to show VFX yeah. portfolio movies. But you know what was the weirdest one he did? Actually, two weird, straight, weird ones that he did were, uh, Billu. Yeah. Right. He was in Billu Barber. Billu. Yeah. They got renamed to Billu, and then Rabne Banadi Jodi. Yeah. Which again I haven't watched. Yeah. I feel like I see the ones which don't look good. And I'm like, sorry. Rabne Banadi Jodi was again a Yash Raj film, and it was there yeah. to launch Anushka. No, she she was launched earlier, wasn't she? I thought this was her launch film, and then. Ranveer, Ranveer got launched with Band Baja Barat. I thought they both got launched together. No, but I could be wrong. No, they were different. Oh. And uh, and then so yeah, so I mean he's done a lot, and I think all the movies that you're talking about, like Fan, Ravan, all of these were Red Chilli's films, and they came later than all the public. To show their yeah. ability. Yeah. And that's where he was like, let me do action because that's where most of the VFX happened. Mm. So he did a bunch of those, and now he's like taking it all back somewhat. Like yeah. I felt like Jawan had a little bit of like a social message, which it, little bit nee, matlab, so much social message. I actually loved it. But thoda sa that will percolate. Like some yeah. of the stories didn't get finished. Some of the stories didn't even show up. Yeah. So so some of those things didn't yeah. happen. But like I think now he's bringing it back to like this like space where he's doing this because the next movie that he's releasing is called Donkey. With uh, Rajkumar Hirani, which mm-hmm. is supposed to be a very, very, you know, thought-provoking film. Yeah. It's like, it's like when we went into this like Amir Renaissance period, yeah. where like every movie that Amir did was just like a hit on a hit on a hit. Yeah. You know, like Mangal Pandey, then uske baad Tare Zameen par, then uske baad no, beech mein Rangde Basanti, uh, Gajni. <laughs> Natasha Classic. always okay. Natasha has this big. Ah, uh, let me talk about it because it really triggers me. You also do it. Everybody does it. <laughs> Viewers, listeners, fans, friends, <laughs> family. <laughs> Gajni, the film Gajni, iconic film by uh, with Amir Khan. Iconic. Iconic. Gajni is not Amir Khan's character. Yeah. Amir Khan's character's name. Is something really simple. <laughs> I don't even remember it. How many? People Gajni know? is the bad guy. So when somebody is forgetful or suddenly forgets something, or if you suddenly forget something, to say I am Gajni is wrong, or you are Gajni, that's wrong. Gajni was the bad fucking guy mm-hmm. who actually beat up Amir Khan or like killed his wife or raped his wife. I don't even remember. Mm-hmm. But you are not Gajni. Okay. Yeah. But that being said, no, most people. No, no, no. <laughs> can I, can yeah, I ask? No, you, can no, I just you say? You can't ask because I know you're wrong. I know it's you trying to defend yourself. No, no, no. You're wrong. I'm not defending myself. What I'm trying to say is that. I, I'll tell you what you're trying to say. He's going to be like, oh, when people say good news, they're talking about the movie. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. 
I think that the popular popularization of the word Gajni and not the character's name was because and I remember this was very because people are stupid. No, was because <laughs> when they were promoting Gajni, um, Amir Khan used to go to like malls and all these places, and he used to get a team of barbers with him, and then they would take people from the like the crowd, the fans, and give them what he called at that time. The Gajni cut, no, you were... which where which again was an iconic like a hairstyle with like full crew <clears throat> and then usme kaise line cut. Yeah, I think I think I need to address no? something very important for our listeners today, is that Arjit very often can be wrong, but will not admit that he's wrong, and will so come up with an explanation. No, no, this is a very common thing. Always, you can you can you can Google it. Call it Gajni cut. I'll cut you. <laughs> anyway, two, two months in, guys. We just have two months left, and you guys are seeing any red flags? <laughs> DM me. What's the biggest red flag? We're <laughs> seeing beige flags also. The Tara Dena just like that. Okay, so fine. Let's conclude. I think it's hard for me to explain why I love Shah Rukh so much, but the one thing that I realize. <laughs> within me how good was the reese by the way anyway. i never watched it right now i don't watch it right now the Social one issue movie the one yeah. thing i realized with me is that it's not like i'm unhappy when there's no sharuk films releasing in a year but i'm so much happy when there is a sharuk film there are three releasing this year he is so kind that he blessed me with pathan on my birthday <laughs> It was a personal thing that he did for me. Just for us. I fucking love Shah Rukh. Uh, I wish I could meet him. Yeah. I really do. I think he's a nice person. I know he's he has some red flags and he said weird things in interviews, but I think he's a respectful man. Um, I don't care about the fucking rumors about Priyanka Chopra and him and Gauri and blah blah blah. Fuck that shit, man. He's Shah Rukh. I don't give a shit. I just love. Yeah, him. I mean, he operates at a different level, right? Yeah, like, like Amitabh Bachchan, who and Alia Bhatt, who, right? Like Shah Rukh is, Shah Rukh is God, yeah. basically for me as well. <laughs> If I ever have to pray, I'm gonna pray to Shah Rukh. <laughs> I fucking love the man. I'm so much happier when he's releasing films. This year there are three coming. It's a good year for us. And um, if you guys feel the same way about me, hit me up. <laughs> yeah, just hit her up. Don't hit her. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>